Hey guys, this is Anthony Morganti from OnlinePhotographyTraining.com. Welcome to my free training on Alien Skin Exposure X4. Please remember to share this video, like this video, and subscribe to my YouTube channel. In our last video, I mentioned that in this video, I was going to cover the Spot Heal tool and the Detail tab. I've changed my mind. I think it's a more natural progression if, in this video, I cover the Spot Heal tool and the Brush tool. In our next episode, I'll talk about the Detail panel in detail. Now, we're going to start out with the Spot Heal tool. It's over here on the right-hand side, and it's this little Band-Aid. And with it, you could remove things in the image that are unwanted. In this image on the ice, I have these sticks uh, on the ice, and I want to get rid of those because I think they're a little bit unsightly. So, in order for you to better see what I'm doing, I'm going to zoom in a little bit. I'm going to hit Command Plus on my keyboard to zoom in. If you have a PC, it's Control Plus. I'm going to drag it over here so you can better see this, this stick on the ice. Now I'm going to activate the tool by just clicking on that little band-aid. And now we have some tool attributes. Now the part you're going to begin with is at the bottom. So you're going to actually affect the attributes of the brush right here. We actually have two different tools in one. One is a heal tool and one is a clone tool. The difference is the clone tool will actually take pixels from one area copy them exactly, and place them in another area. The Heal tool, on the other hand, does more of a blend. It samples those pixels in that other area, but then it blends those pixels in with the existing pixels. In most cases, the Heal tool will work better for blemishes on a person's face. Um, for this case here, I believe it would work better just to get rid of that stick. I think the ice will blend better. The clone tool, on the other hand, when you really just need to remove something, you need to, need to remove a post in the, in the scene, and you could substitute pixels from another part of the image over, let's say, that post or sign. So for this image, I'm going to use the heel part of this spot heel tool. Now, first size, you could affect the size of the brush with the slider. You also could use the bracket keys on your keyboard. The left bracket key will make the brush smaller, the right bracket key larger. Also, if your mouse has a center wheel, you could use that wheel. Or if you have an Apple Smart Mouse, you could just drag your finger along the mouse and you could make that uh, brush size larger and smaller. The feathering of the brush. You could look at the brush and you'll see there's two circles, one inside of the other. The inside circle's 100% uh, heal. It's going to take all the pixels in or affect every pixel in that circle. As it goes out towards that outer circle, it will start to feather and kind of blend in better. And you control that with this feathering slider. So the further out you go, you'll notice that that larger circle circle gets uh, larger and the smaller circle gets a little smaller and as I bring that feathering all the way in you could see that we just have one circle now so there is no feathering in most instances for blemishes I probably I believe probably for the stick I think feathering around 50 will work now you could adjust all these after the fact and I'll demonstrate that in a moment now opacity is you just either going to blend all the pixels or you're just going to kind of fade it and I'll explain that better in a moment. What you'd like to do is you'd like that <clears throat> center circle to just to be a, just to be a little larger than what you're going to remove. In this case this stick and then you're simply going to paint over whatever it is you want to remove and then let go of the left mouse button and you could see that it sampled an area over here. So we have these, um, these samples like right here. And you can see it did a pretty good job. Now, at the very top, you can see it says show outlines always. These are the outlines, so they're always showing. We have some governance over those, uh, the behavior of this. If we click on that, if we go to auto, you'll notice they disappeared. 
And if I go back over the image, you can see they reappear. That's auto. So when your cursor is off the image, they'll disappear. And when your cursor is over image, they reappear. This is the default behavior. Um, we have the active. That means when you have more than one of the spot or uh, spot heel tools applied to the image, only the active one will be showing. And below that is never. They just never show. Um, I'm going to leave this on always for this demonstration because I mentioned that you could then adjust the size, feather, and opacity after the fact. Now, we already applied this. If I think that the size wasn't big enough, I could go to the size slider at the top and move it and make it bigger or littler. So you could kind of fine tune it. I could affect the feathering. So if it didn't look like it feathered good enough or it didn't, you know, it feathered maybe too much, I could change that. And also the opacity. And you'll notice that if I take opacity all the way down to zero, it's as if we didn't do anything. But as I move opacity up to maybe 26%, you'll notice it's still there. 50%, still there. 73, you can see it's starting to fade a little bit now, so we'll move up a little more. Now in most cases, you're probably going to want opacity at 100. One instance where you may not, if someone has a prominent mole, and because of the lighting, um, typically I should add, uh, for portraiture, you want to remove blemishes because they're temporary. But a mole, you usually don't want to remove that. You want to leave that there because that is part of the person. But sometimes with your lighting, you'll make that mole look a little more prominent than it really is. So you could use the heel tool with a lower opacity. So you're just uh, kind of diminishing it a little bit so it's not as prominent. So you could affect this tool after the fact. Now, you could even change from the heel mode to the clone mode. And you could see here it did a subtle difference. Now, another thing you could do is you could re- arrange it meaning if you don't like where it automatically sampled you could just click on this and go to a sample different sample point for instance i'll go right there and you can see how obvious that is so you could move this anywhere you like so if um, exposure x4 did not grab a good sample point in your opinion just grab this and move it to a different point and I like that on auto so I could come up. So that looks pretty natural right there. Now I could come in here and I could remove, let's say, this down at the bottom. This over here. So you could paint or you could just click once. Usually in the case of a blem blemish, let's say, you're just going to click once. And um, But in the case of these sticks and looks like um, goose uh, scat on the uh, ice, you would just uh, kind of paint to get rid of it. So we could go through this image and you could get rid of this. And this, of course, is great for sensor spots on your image, anything like that. Now I have a number of these on here. And I'm going to zoom back out by hitting Command minus. If you have a PC, you'd hit Control minus. So you could see them probably very lightly. They're all there. And as I come off the image, they'll disappear. Let me remove this one too right there okay so we have a bunch of them this is the active one all those other ones are not active if you want to change the behavior of this to the active one only that one will show and it will always show but you really won't see the other ones at all and if you want to go back to readjust those you'll have to go to this drop down and change it back to either auto or always so you could see the other ones and then if you want to come in and readjust them let's say i want to come in and readjust this original one just hover over it so the cursor turns into the hand and then click on it. And now that is the active one. And you could come back in and readjust anything you'd like. So that is the Spot Heal tool. Very easy to use and super effective. It does a really, really nice job. Now, the other thing I want to talk about today is the actual brush tool. And I am going to go, I'm going to try to go to a different image for that. We'll go to this image here of our cat Rocky. And what I'd like to do is brighten his eyes. And that is where the brush tool really will do a great job. 
Now the brush tool is right next to the spot heal tool. To activate it, click on it. And you'll notice this is kind of more than uh, one tool, um, or it's more than one tool in this tool um, palette, I guess you'd say. Um, obviously it's the brush, but you also could put a gradient. And in a few, uh, future episode, we're going to add a gradient to an image. Right now, I just want to talk about the actual brush tool itself. Now, we have the same thing with that overlay or the pins or the outlines. You could see that right here, and we'll talk about that in a moment. But below that is a preset. What I recommend you do to begin with when you're using the brush is pick a preset. I want to make his eyes a little brighter and a little more prominent. So I'm going to click here. And there's a lot of different things you could do. You could see that the preset for blur, for burn, clarity, contrast, cooler, dodge, enhance iris, remove red eye, and so on. So let's go with enhance iris, because that's what I want to do. And the same uh, way to adjust the brush, use the bracket keys. Left bracket key makes it smaller, right bracket key larger. You could use this slider right here where it says size. And you can see right in the middle of the screen, it gives you a sample of the actual brush. Feathering again, and flow again. Now, well, flow is like opacity. It's just how much of, let's pretend this is an actual uh, pen. How much ink is going to come out of the pen? You could affect the flow. The less flow you have, the less of the effect will be applied with each brush stroke. Every brush stroke you do, though, will cumulatively add to the uh, result. So you could brush in the effect very gradually. You could start out with a very low flow and brush it in, see if it's enough. If not, brush it again. Now for this adjustment, I'm going to leave flow at 100. And I'm going to get a brush that is a little bigger than this. I'm going to hit Command Plus once to zoom in so we can better see. And what I'm going to do then is get a brush that's just a little bigger. I'm going to bring, I'm going to bring feathering down to 50 for this. Okay. And then I'm just going to paint on his eye. Now you can see that that is coming in a little bit too strong in my opinion, but we'll do it. And I'll show you what you could do to fix it. Okay, so we have our brush in. I'm going to zoom back out by hitting Command minus once. And I think that is a little bit over the top, don't you think? So what we're going to do now, first of all, I should say, if you look up at the layers, you can see at the top now, we have a new layer. It's called Enhance Iris, and that's the adjustment we did. Well, what I could do is I could come back in here now, and let's say I could go to this Basic tab, and you, these are the adjustments that this brush just did. These aren't the adjustments that I did to the entire image. That's on layer one. So if I click on layer one, look at the adjustments down here. You'll see they changed. So the adjustments down here on layer one were for the entire image. They're global adjustments. I go back up to this layer. Now this layer is just for the eyes. And you can see right here, the mask is, has all the image masked out except for just the eyes. So I want to come in here and I want to readjust this because I think it's just a little bit over the top. So I am going to take saturation back down. Now if I take saturation all the way down, you'll see how we took the color right out of his eyes, but the color is everywhere else because this layer, because of that mask, is only affecting the eyes. And if I hover over it, um, you'll see it takes a second to render. You'll see that red outline goes over our cat's eyes there to show that's the part we're actually affecting with this layer. So I'm going to come back down here and I'm going to put saturation at maybe 10. Let's see what that looks like. 12. All right. Then I'm going to take exposure down just a little bit. And I want, um, I want clarity up. Let's see if we move contrast up a little bit. Contrast up, bring exposure back down just a ton. It's about the same. And we'll go to detail. I want to add some sharpening to his eyes. And I'm going to go back up to basic. It's still a little too bright. So I am going to... Let's 
bring that down to 0.45. So I think that looks pretty good. Now I'm going to go back up to this layer where it says Enhance Iris. And right there, there's a little on-off switch. So I'm going to click on that to turn it off. There's Before and there's After. There's Before and there's After. So you could see we really affected his eyes. And I still think it might be a little bit too bright. I'm going to pull this out here to give me a little more throw on this slider and I could better adjust. Okay, and then I could come back up here. There's Before and there's After. And I think that looks much better. And maybe I just, yeah, I think saturation at 10 is good. So that is the brush. And I think there's a more natural progression because often you would do basic adjustments to your image. Then you do things with the spot heel tool and the brush tool to, with the spot heel, get rid of stuff in the image like sensor spots and things you don't want. Um, in my case, sticks and, and um, duck and goose poo that is on the ice. And with the brush tool, you might do things, especially with portraiture, to, inf uh, to uh, enhance the eyes. So you'll do stuff with the brush. Now in our next episode, I will cover the detail tab in detail. So look for that uh, soon. Thank you so much for watching. Please remember to like and share this video. And please subscribe to my YouTube channel. Also, visit my website, onlinephotographytraining.com. There you'll find thousands of totally free videos and articles to help you with your photography.